This is Doug from 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast, and welcome to another episode of the Chicken Head Chronicles. This one, all about a VIC-20 users group at a small private school in England run by Aid in Stone. The school is a filing school over in England, and I've asked Aid to make a video on his very special VIC-20 users group that he hosts every Tuesday at 4.30 for his students. Many of you who are involved in the VIC-20 community on Facebook have seen Aid's pictures in the past of his uh, VIC-20 setup for his users group. And I thought it'd be a real treat to get him on. Uh, he's a physics professor over there for the kids, but I thought it'd be a real treat to get him on and get his side of the story and give us a tour of the classroom. We'll start out with a tour of the users group and then go right into a great interview with Aid himself. This is the front of the school, the main house, but where we need to be going is to my lab, which is up here. Here's half out the path, and you can see the cliff of Ravenscar, and that's the sea over there. The tides in, we can see from here. And it's just here where we're going, just opposite the stables. Now this looks like the right place. One of the students created that for me. I'll hand all of these on here. And this is what we're interested to in tonight. I particularly like this one. Look, there's the chicken head logo. Oh, look up, up here. There's a poor little apple outside crying at the window because he can't get in. And over here, we've got, there's the glass set. There's a variety of machines in here. Some you'll be familiar with, some you won't. So let's have a look. So these are Raspberry Pis in a Fuse case, fuse.co.uk. But they do a really good version of basic. But here I'm running Combian. So I'm running Vice on the Cumbian system here. So we're all got the same systems. Although we do use a Fuse Basic as well for other applications, especially when programming the Pi on here. So I've got two of them at the back here in the room, all ready to go. This is another Raspberry Pi machine, but this one is inside the Pi 2, I think, or Pi 3, I don't know which one it is. And if I slide this open, you can see the Pi is inside. There. So again, this is running Combian 64 in the VIC-20 mode. And I can easily take out the SD card down here, turn it back into Raspberry Pi if I want to do some electronics on it. But today, it's another VIC-20. Here's another fuse machine. This one is in the style of the BBC, with the cream and red buttons, which I quite like. And over here, you'll see one of my emulators this one i'm particularly pleased with it's running combian 64 vice but look at the back here i've this one's been nicely converted so i've got usb ports in here the hdmi is here the power there's the raspberry pi so you can access the sim card if i need to but i don't need to because this one's going to be permanently permanently a vic 20. But i've even got the ports here this is the time mouth um adapter here you can see for, to convert the keyboard with the uh, two ports just like the 64. So that's a nice late boxed VIC, the CR VIC there, but knowing it, it has got the Raspberry Pi inside it. But what's this? This is my VIC-20 from 1982, my original one, my first one, and here it is working perfectly. You can see on the big CRT machine, we've got uh, the first penultimate cartridge in the back. I've got another one of these on a different machine. I've got the uh, SD card adapter in there, loaded up with some stuff. So we can save and load from that. And if you look up on top of the cupboard there, you'll see the box. There's the original box from my VIC-20 from Christmas 1982. So the kids get to see all this stuff. They get to see the connection between my personal history, the history of the machines. Here is my daughter's VIC-20. She's 11 now and I got this for her when she was just turned nine. 
it's got a penultimate cartridge in the back there so we can run all sorts of stuff and save it on there as before this is coming out with a component output onto a nice new tv as is this thick here this one i think i've got the screws still undone yeah so i can show the kids how machines work inside show them the size of the chips and compare it to the modern raspberry pi they don't lift the lid obviously the risk hazard there and that's running on, an, on a modern tv too so what are these funny things here? Well, these two are mugs, obviously. 20 mugs. Everything's branded here. They're just inside the room, not for sale, but it just adds to it. This is a Commodore 16 case that I bought and there's a Raspberry Pi 3 in it. So that's running Combian 64 as well. Um, those are beautiful mugs. And over here is a Commodore 64 case that I got hold of, really nice condition. And this one has been converted as well. So I've got all the ports all lined up. You can see around here, there's the time mouth converter for the keyboard there. So you can plug joysticks in, that's very nice. <coughs> so they're all running Vic20s at the moment because that's what I that's what I grew up with, and that's what I know the best. I know all the codes for it. So we could easily turn any of these into Commodore 64s. If we wanted to, apart from the, the obviously the three real ones that are over there, um, here are some Osborne books and pull examples from. Here is my original notebook from 1982 with my notes on programs that I was writing at the time. I never got very advanced with machine code, which is a shame, which is why I've got hold of all these books today. So have a look at these. These are all facsimiles I've made from the PDFs available online. So I don't like reading stuff on the screen, I like reading it in a real book. So this is a brilliant one, program in the Vic. Um, I've made these available, so they've got the programmer's reference guide and the user manual all in one book for both the Vic and the 64. And here's some books on machine code that I'm working my way through to try to figure out so I can pass on more information to the kids. You'll know what that is and some more advanced stuff here so my goal is to teach kids how to program these machines from scratch so i hope you've enjoyed um a tour of the lab and some of the stuff that we've got here it's got about half an hour before uh, my students come in and today we're going to be doing some user programmable graphics you remember about that it's one of the things I first first time I did it. It was just so amazing to be able to uh, change the characters. So I prepared these little handouts for them that we're working through. So this is what we're going to look at today: how to make a character, a program of a character. Now, so my story started. I, I. I'd never seen a computer apart from on television. And it was probably a friend of mine had a Z80, a Sinclair Z80, which was 1980, a little white thing. And it overheated. It only lasted about five minutes. I just thought, what the, what the heck is this? You know, and um, then in, in 81, I had started to hear about computers being around the place. But again, I'd never even seen one. But I saw an advert, it must have been on the magazine or something for the Commodore VIC-20 and I must have seen the advert for it. Or maybe there was a, at some point I got a little brochure, you know, like there was like a silver brochure. It was sort of this, you know, this magazine sized and it had, you opened it up and it had the keyboard there. That was the, that was the centerfold, the keyboard of the VIC-20. And I took this up to my bedroom and I put it on my desk in my mm -hmm. bedroom, um, 11, same as you, age as you are. And I thought I can, I can imagine this being here sat here on my desk right here and it was actual size this picture so i imagine pressing the keys and i thought i just need this thing and so i suggested and suggested to my parents and then on christmas 82 we went downstairs and under the christmas tree was this box and it's this box that we know <laughs> i love it it was this I box love it. and uh and we didn't have the tape, the cassette player. And so we just had the, the, the VIC-20, we plugged it into the TV and, and there was a little cartridge with Star Battle, which is the Galaxian clone. 
mm-hmm. and that's all we had. So then I worked my way over Christmas, worked my way through the book, typing in Tank Attack and all the Mission Command or whatever it was at the back of the little book, but I couldn't save anything. So I'd be like typing in for hours, play this game, Vic's getting hot, turn it off at the end of the day, next day, type it in again. Mm-hmm. You know, there was no, you couldn't get, and that Christmas 82, you just couldn't get anything. So my dad said, we've got a cassette player ordered, it'll come in the new year, and I think it came in sort of February or March. So then I could plug it in and save stuff. But it was that, it's that like you, you were saying about any everybody who was 11 or 12 or 10 at that time, it was just this magical world of science fiction being in, yes. in your own house, you know, to be able to, it, this is the thing I talk about when I talk to the kids at school. It's that, that ability to communicate with the television. That's what it felt like. We mm-hmm. were typing and it appeared on the screen. And, you know, before that, we'd only seen a typewriter you type something and it appears on a bit of paper. I mean, so what, but it was that, that sort of revelation that we're interacting with, with electronics. It was just, just unreal. So, um, you know, and the fact that it was in color and and all that sort of stuff. So it was just a really exciting time. And um, a friend across the road, he got one as well. Other kids started to get ZX Spectrums, which came out in 1983, which is the Sinclair in America, mm-hmm. I think, Timex uh, Sinclair, mm-hmm. and with the rubber keys. And so there was that, you were, you were in this gang or that gang, you know, you're in the Commodore yeah. gang or the Sinclair gang. Then the school got a computer, which was the, I think I showed one in my in my video, the, the Acorn, mm-hmm. BBCB. It was a, it's a brilliant basic, but they were so expensive. Um, so I just begged my parents for that the following Christmas, but no, we couldn't afford that. Um, the Commodore 64 arrived that sort of year as well, but no way could we afford it. And it's an interesting thing that when we talk about nowadays, we're so used to buying something and then updating it you know you get iphone then you get the next iphone that sort of stuff but that wasn't in the language that wasn't in the in the sort of the the the, the culture of the early 80s you know you've got a computer now mm-hmm. that's that's yeah. it you're you done know, yeah <laughs> not, not before. What are you talking about there's 10 times as much money for that uh-huh. not gonna, you're not going to be getting that so but that was a good thing because it meant that i had to start fiddling what's this machine code i've heard about or what is you know, what's an RAM expansion? You know, how can I get 16K on this thing? What's an assembler cartridge that you can plug in? So it was, it, whereas the kids who had the money, they got the Commodore 64, they got a BBC B, or they got the next Spectrum and it had 48K. They got this other thing, they got the other thing. And they just carried on playing games, playing better games, playing better games. But I was stuck with 16K, you know, and, and basic version two. So yep. I probably got a little bit further than I would have done if I had, my parents had the money. So I'm thankful <laughs> for that in a way, you know. Yeah. And by 1986, so I'm 15, and uh, I thought I want to get I want to get a new computer now. I want to do something more. Um, and so most people then had a 64 or a Spectrum. Those were the two ones in Britain. And as so I thought, well, what's this one to eight I've heard about? So, um, you know, and I looked at all the prices and I looked at all the things, thought this would be really exciting. There was the two versions, wasn't there? There was the one piece version and there was the similar to the thing that's in your background. Was that an Amiga? I can't tell from here. Yeah, I've got an Amiga. Back that's then. an Amiga. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It was that the first scene that, that looks like a real computer with the separate parts mm-hmm. to it, you know. So um, I thought about could we get that? And then um, we went to um, a Commodore. No, it wasn't a Commodore. It was a. It was like a multi-company event conference thing, um, exhibition in London. And I went to the Commodore stand and they said, if you hold out to March, there's something really special coming out. Said, what is it? Yeah, and they said, oh, it's, it's this Amiga thing. Mm-hmm. And, and they were showing the bouncing ball demos and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. and, um, and, but it was thousands of pounds. Mm-hmm. And it was March. And I thought, I want something for Christmas. Mm-hmm. So, so I became an Atari ST user. So, uh, so yeah. Okay. So I, yeah. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta end this call right now, man. I gotta end this call. <laughs> no, so, the you know, Atari so ST learned, is a fine machine. Yeah. So I learned desktop publishing, so, but stopped programming. And I think that's the thing. This is the story I'm leading to is that I got my Atari ST and used it as a multimedia computer. Mm-hmm. And I did my degree on it. I mean, physics did all that sort of stuff. Then, um, then got, I ended up getting a Mac later on, and then 
various more Macintoshes and all sorts of stuff. And when you know, use use it for video editing, music production, multimedia, all the stuff that we know and love. Mm -hmm. And then I became a teacher about seven years ago, and uh, and I don't know what triggered it. Maybe because my kids were the same age as I was, I got the Vic Twenty down from the loft to see if it would work. And we put it put it on and showed my kids who were quite young then, uh, sort of between five and ten, and showed them this thing. I thought there's something great about this that's been missing this idea that it's not a multimedia machine that will do anything it will do nothing until you program it yep. and so i took it into the i took it into my first classroom and uh, put it there as a metaphor really to say look here it is and it was something i saw in a vic 20 advert something about being a pilot not a passenger mm -hmm. i thought that sort of resonates oh, yeah. that, that idea of learn to program these games you're playing because kids play all sorts of games on their phones and their iPads and their PCs and stuff. I said, why not learn how it works? Why not learn how the universe works? And it sort of tied in with me teaching physics about find out how things work. We live in an advanced, technologically advanced civilization. That's what Carl Sagan says, mm -hmm. in, in which nobody knows how any of it works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I thought it's my job to tell people how the universe works. I'm teaching physics, for goodness sake. So, this computer i thought how does it work you know so i thought if i can teach them electronics you know how the processor works how how the silicon chip works they knew and i was surprised how little they knew they knew nothing i mean when we were kids i bet you were the same as me you took stuff apart oh absolutely a radio uh -huh. a calculator mm -hmm. you know a tv if you got a spare anything you took it apart and inside you found these little resistor things little chips little transistors maybe valves all sorts of stuff and marveled at it how does it all work mm -hmm. but today's kids what i found today's kids don't do that they don't take things apart they don't know how it works they show me a resistor they don't know what it is sure you it's shocking it was it was like a real eye opener thing they don't even know the general knowledge that we got from playing with radio shack bits and bobs so um so that made me think of how can i put this into my lessons and into the class this missing bit this gap mm -hmm. and i thought the Vic 20 is part of this. So I went on eBay, bought some a few more. Then I found out about emulation and I'd got a Raspberry Pi and it was sat there doing nothing. And I thought, I wonder if I can turn it into a Vic 20. So that was, you saw in the lab, um, in the video, I got converted quite a few sort of mm -hmm. empty cases, put Raspberry Pis in them. thought that means I can plug it into a monitor. Because another thing I found was kids don't like cathode ray tubes. Right. And we had that years they don't oh, i don't like the buzzing sir it's making me a headache you know <laughs> we can't hear it anymore it doesn't bother us <laughs> our you know, ears are so bad we can't hear it. tiny little screens in the living wow. in the living room for years yeah you know yeah. so the emulation helped that sort of side of it as well or i bought you know the scart cables where you plug it into the component you can get you can get a nice picture on a flat screen in certain makes of tvs so i got these computers together and thought how can i teach the very very basics um and do it and do it as an after school club and uh, that's where we're at mm -hmm. you know so you brought up some a lot there sorry <laughs> no no i love it you brought up some really good points when we had our vic 20s commodore 64s and even the amigas we had to create Whatever yeah. we did, you know, of course we could, you know, buy a game and play a game, but so much of our time was spent also creating, you know, oh, I can make this thing play music. Oh, I can make the uh, a little character run across the screen and smooth scrolling. Oh, let's try it out, you know, code it in. But with computers today, I don't care if it's a Mac or a PC or what, you, they're not used for regular people, for kids to create with anymore. You know, you, you buy a program. You use your word processor, you know, you get on the web, you look something up, but you know, while there are, are of course still people that create on it, it's not a, a hobbyist thing to do as much as it used to be. Now along comes the raspberry Pi, And to me, it almost feels like the raspberry Pi is a continuation, a modern continuation of what we used to do back in the eighties. You know, here's this thing that on its own, can do very little. You know, you yeah. put it in the box. What am I going to do with it? Well, I have to create something. I have to put another little bit on here or a bob or upload something or code something to make it. Oh, wow. I can, I can make something on this. So to me, it almost feels like the pie is a, is a spiritual yeah. successor 
to what we did in the 80s. Yeah. And this is the clincher, I think, is that I'm teaching physics. I'm not teaching computer science per se. Um, but I don't know what it's like in the US, but in Britain, we're supposed to teach the curriculum has you're supposed to teach certain subjects, you know, that every school should have them. And for years, there's been a thing called IT or ICT on the curriculum. But it has never, ever taught computer programming. It's always how to use computers. So mm -hmm. um, and it got heavily criticized by various experts and then eventually finally the government a few years ago to say all we're teaching kids to do is learn how to use proprietary products make a spreadsheet and it's always microsoft products how mm -hmm. to make it do a word document write a letter you know really almost like secretarial skills sure. which we would have a generation ago mm -hmm. and nobody knows how to program anything so there's been this big move in britain to how can we get kids to program and every attempt has failed every attempt because mainly there's no teachers who know how to do it mm -hmm. it's, it's like well, when we were at school, um, the school didn't even have a computer. Nobody knew how to do it. You know, so we were ahead of the game. Uh, being 11, 12 year olds, you know, 10 print, you know, we could do these things. And teachers didn't know what, what we were talking about. Absolutely. So we're in that situation now, 30 years later. So that's why it feels like there's a revolution afoot, because there's a body of people. It's, and it's funny that it's like us and people like us in various different formats, not just Commodoreans, but all sorts of people, um, sort of thinking, when I was a kid, this worked. Why can't we do it like this? You know, mm -hmm. so you've got schools with their modern PCs, and they usually are some cheap, you know, off-the-shelf PC thing. Um, they're multimedia machines that the kids are looking at YouTube, searching for data for their essays and stuff like that. You know, to again get them to switch into some boring sort of environment to make a character go across the screen well you can do that in photoshop in seconds it's just a total waste of their time moving the mouse is like an amazing thing for us back in 1980s oh, yeah. now well it's just just the environment mm -hmm. so to have a multimedia machine where you're learning program on has failed and that was my motif to say if we get the 8-bit machine in it does nothing and and, I've, and it's and it's been proved to work so i've had kids boys and girls from age the youngest was I've, the youngest I've had in is sort of eight up to 18 typing mm -hmm. in poke three six eight seven nine comma whatever 153 or something and it changes the screen color then set up a little four next loop oh I'm scrolling through all the screen colors then create user definable graphics and pro turn the a into a little alien mm -hmm. you know these really simple things which you would think hang on these kids have got iPads they they're not going to be interested in this and yet they are because yes. they're getting the same satisfaction that we got when we mm -hmm. first did it. Because I'm doing this. I'm talking directly to the 6502 or whatever it, they want to, you know, whatever you want to frame it. I'm talking to the computer in a way that I'm not when I'm playing with YouTube. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not doing anything. So uh, I wish there was a way of getting it and work like yours is maybe a way of doing it. Getting that message out there to say, look, strip all the nonsense away and let's get kids playing with I don't care if it's a Commodore, I don't care if it's basic or whatever, but get playing with some machine that like this. I just wish that in a way that somebody would put the Raspberry Pi in a keyboard, you know, mm -hmm. and sell it just like that and make it so it doesn't do anything else, that it just is just for programming. Mm -hmm. um, the nearest is um, the thing that's on, you'll see in my lab, the F-U-Z-E, the Fuse company, and they've put them in this metal box Mm -hmm. And they put their own version of BASIC on it. It's brilliant. Um, that's the nearest thing. But um, And then, of course, the C64 lot who are relaunching the um, Commodore 64 new thing next week. I've got mine on order. <laughs> mm -hmm. so there are these little initiatives. But if, if, if there was one that was just, I don't know, you know what I mean? There must be, mm -hmm. this is what it needs. This is what education needs to get the kids doing that simple programming, gets a simple result rather than trying to, well, let's send it into space. No, we don't need to send it into space. We just need right. to move a little basics. character across the screen. Mm -hmm. The <laughs> basics, yep. yeah. Yeah, and, and you're right. They do find some of this older equipment just as, fasting, as fascinating as their iPad or their tablet, whatever. My 15-year-old son, he was 14 at the time, has just as much fun coming out here in my office and sitting down with me in front of the VIC-20 or the Commodore 64 and playing a game from you know, 35 years ago, yeah. as he does hooking up his PS4 and playing Fortnite. And, and you know, he, he's not 
thinking about you know the advanced graphics or anything he's thinking oh this is kind of cool this is wow look this little machine can do that it's so and and uh, I, I really find that the even the youth can really get interested in some of this older equipment if they're just exposed yeah. to it yeah. the, the, the weird thing is we, we what, what attracts them to it and i uh, the the thing that they really like is jelly monsters you know pac-man oh and heavens that, yes and and my tutor group is the group that i have they're all 15 year olds and that's my tutor group at school and um so we meet every morning at school and it's our last day of term this week and they said can we play can we can we get the the games out can we get the computers out so what we're going to do is we're going to get the vic 20s out and we're going to have a championship we're going to have oh. a jelly monsters star battle demon attack mm-hmm. championships you know and the funny thing is about it they said so you can't because <laughs> i'm too good at it <laughs> I just smashed them. Yeah, yep. you can play Call of Duty. Yeah, okay, Fortnite, whatever. But you can't play Spaces like yep. I can. <laughs> That's right. I'll beat you in Cosmic Cruncher any day of the week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yep. That's absolutely true. So, your meetings that you do, your club that you do, what's a what's a normal meeting like? I mean, is it is it you standing up and and guiding them? letting them just do their own thing, follow examples in a magazine? What, what what would a normal meeting be like? Last year, I started off and I had all these high-fluted ideas about how brilliant it would be and how wonderful. I prepared some bits and bobs and I got all the stuff ready and thought it'd be great. And all they wanted to do was play Pac-Man, you know, and it was, <laughs> oh, this isn't what I wanted to do. This isn't the point of it. So I sort of tried to change it and I prepared little um, sheets, which I can send on to you later, of little tasks. And I said, the point is we're trying to, Let's understand artificial intelligence. How can we get the computer to appear like a Turing machine so that we can type things in and it will answer back? Because that's the big, that's the origin of that's Siri, that's Cortana and all those sort of all mm-hmm. those sort of things. How can we use use it, use the Vic 20 to do that? So I came up with these little tasks. And um, but first, of course, I have to start with the basics. And this is where you would be surprised. So if you get look, have the, they switch the computer on, they start typing, they think it's a Word document. So they don't press return. Right. They, think they can use the cursor key to go up to the top of the screen to back where they were. And no, it's not a Word document, it's a terminal. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I had to go back and have an introductory bit from the very start of this is how it works, guys. And I lifted the lid, showed them inside and said, look, this is what we're talking to, this. And this is how it works. And I showed them terminal on the Mac, which they'd never seen. I showed them Python on a Mac to say, look, this is the new version of it. It's the same. Yep. So the mantra that they all get from me is computers 30 years ago, 40 years ago, and today are exactly the same, apart yep. from one respect, today's ones are smaller, mm-hmm. which means you can get more stuff in it. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it's the same. So that broke overcome that barrier of this is old tech because it doesn't matter. It's the same. So they've, they've got that. So now we have... Each time I've got like a theme and say, type this in. Let's try this. Let's solve a problem. Let's. So last week we did the week before we did flow charts. How can I get the computer to move a little graphic to the left or to the right and try to get them to think of it? How can we do that? Well, we need to input. And I said, OK, this is how we input from a key from this from the keyboard. This is how we poke it to the screen, blah, blah, blah. So it was like having a theme that we were trying to that we were trying to solve. And um and it seems to work like that. So it needs a structure because without the structure, they just play Pac-Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, as you're explaining what you were trying to get them to do to move the character, in my head, I'm trying to write the basic program for doing that right now. I, I'm sitting, okay, so I need to, you know, get this. And okay, I'm going to stop yeah, yeah, programming yeah. in my head. <laughs> and then you get to the edge of the screen. We want it to bounce back, you know, that sort of thing. Uh-huh. Uh, so, yeah, so we achieved all that. Um, had a, there was another there's a guy who was in the class this week and he's a bit more he's top student anyway he was from South Korea and he he took the next weeks because I gave him a pamphlet with all the stuff in so he just went on to the next thing and he said oh you can do sound on it I said yeah you can so have a go so he figured out how to sound he figured out set up some variables so he could call um, um, a, you know, a B C D E F G to play the right note and a key press and he did it and he did it totally on his own and he was going duh, 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 duh. and I said yeah, but that's no good is it because if it was a piano it would die off the note would stop playing when you lifted your key off how can we do that mm-hmm. and so we sat there and thought how do we do that 
I want the volume to drop to zero. And then, I'm, you know, and this sort of thing. And so I said, well, we need a four next loop in there. Let's mm. do that. And he did it. Yeah. So then he had a keyboard. He'd made a, so he made it himself. He wasn't copying out any notes. He put I it together. I loved it. Yeah, oh, that's fascinating. Do, 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 do. Then I said, do the other way around. And then it'll, you know, this. And so, yeah. So he went home really happy that oh, yeah. conquered something and actually created something. Mm-hmm. So that was really, that was the highlight. Mm-hmm. Would you say that that the all of the children have had a real positive experience with this? I mean, you, do you ever get the kids that you know, no, this is too old, this is garbage, and just not interested, or does everybody really well, get something out of the class? That's the interesting thing because it's a club. Because I'm mm-hmm. not teaching it's not. I mean, I have to teach everybody physics whether they mm-hmm. want it or not. <laughs> because yeah, yeah, which is. You know, whereas the teachers who teach art or music, the ones who don't want to do it, drop it. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't, have, they don't have to do it. But you have to do science. Um, but this is a club, so you don't have to do it. So the ones who don't want to do it don't come back. Okay. And it's okay. bad. And, and, you, and you have that sort of thing of, oh, she didn't come back. Oh, that's really a shame. She didn't like, what did I do wrong? You know, mm-hmm. but sort of that thing of, well, I've only got eight machines. So if, if I've got 10 kids coming. Well, that's mm-hmm. enough, isn't it? What, what's my problem? You know, that's quite a large proportion of a school that's only got 170 pupils. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So 10 kids come and they come back and they come back and they come back. And they're half boys, half girls. And they say, how can I get one of these at home? So I tell them how to get one at home. Really? You know, and it's, and it's that. That's the oh, thing. That's, so, that's wonderful. You know, and and uh, or a guy brings his laptop in and says, can I set up the emulator on my laptop? So, yeah, I can. I'll show you how to do it. Yep. You know, uh, so there's different routes in, and um, it's but it's that the ones who come back and go, is the club on next week, sir? Yes, it is. You know, <laughs> you know? and you know, you know, what's amazing, amazing, is just this month they're coming out with that new C64 yeah, yeah, that yeah. has VIC 20 mode built into it. Yeah, you know, it's it's just amazing. I mean, now in it's almost 2020, we're going to be able to walk into a store, buy a computer for a hundred dollars, and it'll. Yeah act like a vic 20 it'll act like a commodore 64 it's just amazing i never thought we'd see the day where where we've come full circle like this uh any thoughts about maybe getting one or two of those for the classroom yeah definitely it was a mine's on order i ordered it the minute they announced the full size version so uh-huh. so yeah and i got an email today say it should be here next week so we'll see but um it, it, yeah, I, I mean, when I heard that they did the mini thing, I thought, well, oh, it's no good. It doesn't have a keyboard. What's the matter with you? You know, mm-hmm. it's just it's just a pretend thing. Um, and they said the full size one was coming. And I probably can't claim claim the glory for this. But every time they posted something, I posted, turn it into a VIC-20, put a VIC-20 mode on it. And I posted pictures of the club or I posted, I'm using these in my class. Um, and I want to use it as a VIC-20, put it as a VIC-20, make sure you've got a VIC-20. And I kept on saying it. Sure. Then they did it. So who knows? Maybe I twist it. Now, would you, have you ever tried to get uh, uh, donations of real VIC-20s for the club? Have you gone out and, and looked for that? Or if somebody handed you a brand new VIC-20, would you, uh, is that something that you guys would like in the class as real VIC-20s? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I got, but I, I'm, I'm quite modest. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go shouting about i'm not begging so i uh, there was one guy on ebay i was selling something on ebay or buying something on ebay and 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 i just ended talking to the seller or the buyer i can't remember if i was buying or selling at the time and he said oh I've, I've got some spare bits do you want them so it's so he sent me some stuff some bits that i could then merge with other bits i got to make another working vic 20 so that was that was nice and a parent of somebody in the school said oh we're changing our pcs and We've been given a grant, and it includes monitors. I've got ten monitors. I said, "Please, I love them." Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely, so got HDMI monitors, mm-hmm. which you saw in the in the video clip. So, um, so I'm not proactively saying, "Here's a crowdfunder, give me some money," but mm-hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> I'd be very grateful for anything that anybody wants to contribute to kids being able to code. Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. So, like it's probably a year or two years that I've been sort of proactively, like you said, getting going back in time and I, and um and where i live if you saw in the video it's it's a perfect place it's nice and it's really calm and Gorgeous. you can think you can think it is time travel and and the pressures of um of the rest of the world and all the problems we've got politically and economically it's sort of, they can fade away in that moment and you think 
I am 11 again. I can be, for a brief moment, I can be that, I have that. And it is a sense of joy. Mm-hmm. It is it is, it is, I know this sounds really spiritual and strange and you can edit it out, but it does sound, it does feel that, um, uh, what's the word? Um, um, transcendental, <laughs> you know, it does feel that, and, and I think there's something about um, being in touch with that, your younger self, before you had all the worries of trying to earn money and all the rest of the stuff that we have to do, you know, before life got complicated and busy and scheduled, that, that brief moment back in the early 80s when, you could sit there and spend hours just trying to figure it out mm-hmm. and acting with that younger version of yourself through the re-engaging with the stuff, as you've said, mm-hmm. it, um, it, it does add that sense of joy. And- well, I'd like to thank you for being on the show today. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to put some links up for, uh, you, if you don't mind, maybe your email address or whatnot. So if anybody has maybe a spare Vic 20 or two, they want to donate, they'll have a way to get in touch with you, if you don't mind. Yeah, if I put the email address, the school, I'll use the school email address and you can see the school website as well. That's where then you sure. can see where we're talking about and what 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 we're, um, what we're about. Mm-hmm. Thanks again for being on the show. I do appreciate it. And uh, uh, in the future, as you expand the lab and, and get things even more interesting, get more people involved. I'd love to have you back on to show off your uh, your meetings. So thanks again for coming on. If anybody has any ideas for little pieces of code, uh, little short little tasks, I'm trying to invent them. I'm looking through all the books, trying to pull out little short little programs that have an immediate learning point. And I've got a few, but if anybody's written anything that mm-hmm. they think, oh, get them to try this, that would be brilliant. Mm-hmm. Well, that was really cool. I really appreciate Aid taking time out of his day to be able to spend a little time with us and tell us about his VIC-20 past, tell us about his VIC-20 users group that he sponsors. Now, if any of you do have VIC-20s laying around, a spare one that you'd like to donate to him, I think it's a great cause f- to allow the kids to learn more about the VIC itself. So if you know anyone who's got extras, get in touch with them at the, uh, the in- with the information that I've already given you. But until next time, this is Doug from the Chicken Head Chronicles signing out.